What's up gamers, it's Absurd here, and today I want to talk about Air, our coral waifu in Armored Core 6. Just like how Rusty reminded me of Joshua O'Brien from Armored Core 4, Air reminds me of Fiona Jarnafel, our operator from Armored Core 4. Fiona is the OG Armored Core waifu. Granted, she showed up in fourth generation, and we'd already had three generations of games with female operators, but none of them really compare to her. User JovenKnight005 conducted a poll on Reddit prior to the Armored Core 6 release to determine everyone's favorite operator in the series. I was unsurprised when Fiona won, but let's get into why the fanbase likes her so much. The TLDR is that she likes you. First of all, before Armored Core 4 starts, Fiona rescues our pilot from a wreck, effectively saving our life. That counts for a lot. Her mid and post mission comms to us throughout the game include lines like, You're truly amazing. I never would have guessed looking at you back then. I miss those days. I was so worried. I'm relieved that it was you who won. You should get some rest now. Sleep well, soldier. Her character not only serves as mission support, but as emotional support. We don't want to let her down. Near the end of the game, she mentions, Let's get away from all this, implying that we should run away together when this is all over and the closing cutscene confirms that we do. She took him and left Anatolia. I had no right to stop them, no words to keep them here. I'll stop my telling here. It isn't my place to speak of what happened after that. We fight the Lynx War and we get the girl. What's not to like? FromSoft brings back this waifu element with another affectionate female operator in Armored Core 6, with Air. And from what I can tell, the fans love it, at least based on the fan art I've seen floating around. Now, much of this art is way too horny for me to feel comfortable posting on YouTube, but if you're interested, you've probably already seen it. If not, check out Reddit. I think part of what makes Air so alluring is the Fiona element, but that's in addition to the mystery of Coral surrounding her character. So at the risk of diminishing that mystery for all the Air simps, let's try to unravel her a bit. We first meet Air at the end of chapter 1 during a cutscene before we fight Balteus. We receive a massive dose of Coral at the watch point and black out. We make contact with Air, who encourages us to wake up and survive, in a way you might say is similar to how Fiona saves us before the events of Armored Core 4. Air takes our comms link offline, removing our contact with Walter, but stays to support us through the fight. Now I butted heads with Balteus for about 3 hours on my first playthrough, so me and Air spent a lot of time together in a relationship forged by fire while contact with you played in the background. This is not the Balteus theme, it's the Air theme, or at least one of them. I noticed something curious about the tracks that could be considered Air's themes. Contact with you, which plays during the Balteus fight, and Cries of Coral, which plays when you fight her in the fire's ending. These are not themes about her specifically, they are about relationships. Her relationship with you, and her relationship with Coral. Speaking of relationships, our intimacy with Air increases over time. When we lose comms with Walter again while surfing the uninhabited floating city, Air notes how we are alone and there is no need to rush things. I of course took this as a clue to look for hidden parts, despite the overt implication of us spending more time together. Hare also becomes more playful, pranking us by impersonating Allmind for a laugh. 
Nothing about this behavior is explicitly romantic, but we do develop a close relationship with her. Whatever other dots we wish to connect between Air's monologues, it's her desire for symbiosis that's the unifying theme. This goal of hers is an inherent part of what Air is. So let's dig into that a bit. When we first meet her, Air introduces herself as a Rubiconian, as I mentioned earlier. This is technically true, but a bit misleading for us at the time due to missing context. It would be easy at that point to assume that Air is indeed another human Rubiconian with whom we have linked minds due to the coral. That might seem a bit creepy, but we don't get any further overt insight into how or why that works until the mission Destroy the Ice Worm at the end of Chapter 3. When the Ice Worm is defeated, we get this revealing cutscene. Raven, there's something I have to tell you. The coral, it's my family. My brothers and sisters. I am but a single wave, born from the coral tide. A Rubiconian without a body. No one even knew I was there for such a long time. Raven, you're the only one who... We learn that Air does not have a body, and that she refers to the Coral as her brothers and sisters, which explains why she sounded disgusted and alarmed that the worm seemed to be using Coral as fuel. She essentially is Coral. If we recall back to the intro cinematic, Coral is described as a powerful data conduit. 621 Raven is a fourth gen augmented human, a generation which used coral. We can see that in the story trailer, and also in every commenced mission sequence, the sea pulse amplitude being one of the monitored vital signs. Air's consciousness is born on the coral tide, and because of our coral augmentation, she is able to wirelessly transmit data within our brain. Talk about intimacy. This concept of intimacy and relationship is captured in the titles of her theme tracks. She is in the coral as much as she is in us. Because of this, it is difficult to discuss air without discussing coral in general. And that could lead us off on some tangents that I want to avoid for this video. But I'll attempt to tread the line a bit. If you remember back to the mission Attack the Watch Point, we find a data log there which observed a coral wave mutation. It mentions other plot relevant details as well, but I'll save those for another time. Once Air is revealed to be part of the coral, we can put together that she likely is this wave mutation observed at the watch point where we first made contact with her. We don't get confirmation of this until New Game Plus Plus, when All Mind refers to Air as a sea pulse wave mutation. The nature of that mutation is unclear, but seems to include a form of autonomous sentience that separates Air from the coral hive mind, though she still feels its pull. It's clear that Air is not like the other coral in some ways. She is able to make contact with us. She knows about our augmentation more than we do. And she understands AC systems. Could she have been an augmented AC pilot at some point before becoming a wave mutation? Or is her knowledge of these things a symptom of being all alone, trapped in the ether for long enough to read databases all across Rubicon? It could be either or both. Anyway, from here on out, our magical girlfriend begins to make her goals clear to us. She frequents the topic of symbiosis between humans and coral, which is very on brand for her. She is empathetic for her coral brothers and sisters, and was all alone until she made contact with us. 
Symbiosis could create more intimate relations between humans and coral for the better, according to her. And based on our relationship with her, it seems likely to be true. Air is supportive and helpful, never impeding our own will. She encourages us to spread our wings and make the decisions we feel are right, even when she may not agree, at least up to a point. But symbiosis has multiple forms in the game. The symbiosis of the RLF, as demonstrated by Father Dolmayan, who made contact with Saria through consuming coral. The symbiosis we have with air via the coral incident at the wash point and symbiosis through coral release. Neither Air nor Steria seem satisfied with the symbiosis they'd achieved with Dolmayan or 621, a symbiosis in which the autonomy of the human is maintained. The alternative would be a symbiosis in which humans would enter the coral network rather than the coral mutations making contact through the human network. Saria urged Dolmayan to cast the die and achieve this second type of symbiosis through coral release, which he was unable to do. Likewise, Air wonders if there could be more to the symbiosis we had with her and is optimistic for its potential in all three ending. The human-sided symbiosis we see through Dolmayan in 621 is just not enough for Air and Saria. They won't be satisfied until we jump in with both feet, casting off all self-preservation, and see where symbiosis takes us. I've been there before. So we have three choices. In the Bros Before Hose ending, we carry out Walter's legacy to destroy the coral. Air cannot abide with that decision and takes physical form in an Ibis Model AC to stop us. If she defeats us, she mentions that we were the only one, referring back to her comment after the worm fight and trailing off again like she did there. We were the only one she'd made contact with, and likely would ever make contact with, due to the dying breed of old gen augmentation, and therefore we are also the only one left who could fulfill her dream of symbiosis by coral release. If we defeat her, she says she still believes in our shared dream, which is a bit confusing. If we shared that dream, then wouldn't we have pursued it in this timeline? So she is likely referring to her shared dream with the coral, unless there is some unspoken context between Air and 621 that we don't see. In the Liberator ending, nothing happens to the coral and Air remains hopeful that we will come around to the idea of greater symbiosis between humanity and the coral. Like Saria, she wants more than the status quo. The ending in which we cast the die initiates coral release, scattering our consciousness across the star, among the coral tide as we join Air on the other side. After playing the game several times and doing research for this video, I still don't fully know what that means, or how I feel about her. Maybe it's supposed to be that way. Casting the die isn't about being certain, and to understand it would diminish the alluring mystery of our coral waifu.